What's going on everyone? PHX here and today we're going to go over what you need to know about the Division 2 before you jump in this Friday when the game is officially released. For those that have the game already and have been in the early access since yesterday, you will already be aware of the amount of changes that are different from the first and the second game. Yes, there are similarities regarding playstyle, efficiency, and mechanics, but there is a whole slew of new mechanics and diversity in just the beginning stages of the game that I feel are necessary to optimize your experience and get to the end game as soon as possible. Of course, there will be other guides for this specific topic, and they should be well received because ultimately it is up to you, the agents, to find the best route and tactics necessary to help you achieve your goals throughout the missions and make it to the end game. So without further ado, let's begin by going over a very important and immediate topic, your gear. Gear is very important now, in beginning stages that it once was in the first division. Low level gear has a purpose, and it all can be effectively used with one another, if it is the same set. With each piece of gear you own, you will have special attributes to help you in combat, which is very important, but we will get to that later in the video. For levels 1 through 9, you will mostly receive green or standard gear. As soon as the barrier in level 9 is broken, meaning as soon as you start to receive experience, you will slowly progress to blue or specialized gear, while also ranging from purple to yellow to orange or exotic pieces. You can kind of gauge when you will start receiving specific colored gear in relation to your overall character level just by when the drops start occurring. Next, with gear sets in the beginning stages, you will have a slew of attributes to help you in combat, varying from weapon damage to critical hit chance to cooldown status, etc. For example, if you have three of the same gear set, you will unlock all three attributes pertaining to that set. So if you have three greens, you will unlock all three attributes, which allows for further customization of another gear set you could acquire throughout your missions. There is an endless amount of customization that is involved in the early stages to help you be better accustomed when you get to the end game so you can find the proper build necessary that will work for you and your character. So now let's go into stats and weapons. <clears throat> you have three primary stats that will constantly change over the course of your character's development and customization. Those stats are armor, which is blue, weapon damage, which is red, and your electronics, which is yellow. Your armor stat defines how effective your armor, the white bar, is in combat and how much sustainment it can take before breaking. The higher the armor, the more effective it will be in combat. Your weapon damage stat is red, and the same principle applies. The higher tier gear you get, the more weapon damage you will be able to put, it, put out so keep a constant reminder on the damage that you currently have. But again, you're running with what you feel comfortable with. <laughs> Lastly, electronics. The electronics that applies to the equipment you have regarding the skills you have in your arsenal. The electronics that helps with cooldown, or when you can use the skill again, to damage the skill can inflict, Health for that skill or sustain it for when the skill is used. The higher the electronics, the better your skills will be and how effective they will be in combat. So now let's move on to your weapons. Your weapons play a major role in how you will be effective to your enemies. Between rate of fire, damage, and your accuracy. The status of every specific weapon you acquire guides you in what you will find most effective in combat. From RPM damage, and bullet drop-off. Green tier weapons will only provide a reload time. Your critical strike range and your damage drop-off. Blue tier weapons will start to roll certain talents like increased accuracy, stability, reload time, etc. So as you further progress, every piece of equipment will be beneficial to you in some way or another depending on your playstyle. You'll get two or more of the same weapons. And with every increase in level, the weapon stats will change to show the, show the change in level variance. So keep this in mind with scavenging new gear. Now that we've gone over the basics of gear and weapons, let's go over perks that you should immediately purchase during your engagement with the Division 2. Agent, I've got something special for you here. Your first and foremost perk when starting will be to acquire your secondary weapon. 
This is not up for negotiation, but a requirement before you can progress any further in the game. Next, perks use a currency significant to the Division 1. However, the currency has more of a purpose, which is Shade Tech. You acquire Shade Tech from caches, story missions, side missions, during your level 30 grind. If you want to gain more experience per firefight, I recommend buying all the experience accolades noted with a shield in the second row of the Quartermaster's list of perks to help achieve faster experience levels. Each of the accolades will help your character progress faster towards level 30. The next perk I recommend is buying your increased inventory stash. This will increase the inventory capacity that you currently have on your backpack to help with carrying loot, and your backpack will become full within the first hour of your playthrough. My next recommendation would be the detection perk. The detection perk will help navigate you to the closest available loot chest by highlighting the chest in an orange lining. This will help significantly in loot finding and acquiring better gear for progression. Lastly, I do not recommend spending any type of material for crafting. Right now, in the beginning stages of the game, crafting is not necessary. What I do recommend, though, purchasing with your shade tag are the grips, muzzle, and magazine perk. This will help in diversifying your weapons to increase efficiency in defeating the enemies throughout your progression. So now, next, let's move on to combat. All right, so now we're in a combat zone. So combat is different in the Division 2. The mechanics are still the same, but the amount of damage that can be taken are relatively different. The white line above your health body armor plays an important role in receiving damage. This is relative to gear, as I mentioned above. As soon as your body armor breaks, you have only a limited amount of rounds you can take before your character becomes defeated. Bear in mind that when in combat, your health will recover slowly, however your armor will not. Though when out of combat, both your health and BA will recover significantly faster. Body armor is not hard to come by. You can find body armor in the chest and drop by anyways, so don't be afraid to use what you have. Over time throughout the course of your progression, you can visit the perk tree to acquire more slots for body armor. So just choose what is effective to you. In my case, I chose only one extra slot. And I'm going to keep it that way for a while until I feel the need until I feel the need for more slots. This is a cover looter shooter. If you find yourself dying amid a firefight, you're probably not taking cover as needed. Now, I'm not saying that you need to spend your whole time behind cover. What I am simply stating is that cover is your best friend in this type of game. Be careful of flanking enemies, and the division enemies weren't as aware of your location. For anyone that has played the first game, you know you can stay behind a bear, annihilate a group of Rikers without being flanked. This is no longer the case. The AI is smarter and will try every advantage of getting on the sides of you and your squad, or behind you to flank you. Just be mindful of your surroundings with situational awareness. And you should come out on top just fine. Higher tier enemies will have stronger armor. You will notice that the higher level of the enemy, the stronger the armor is just continue to place rounds down range until you have heard the break in armor and just as a side note if running solo the turret skill is and can be your best friend in an overwhelming firefight so keep that in mind so now i'm just going to finish this off use the turret so just sit back and let's see how well i do Just like that. Wasn't behind cover and immediately died. So now let's go on to experience and missions. 
DC is riddled with activities to help increase your overall level and acquire better loot. As soon as you step out to the open world of DC, you will come across a variety of activities to help progress your character. This all can be done at your own pace and any way you want. A recommendation that I have for you is to clear the settlement area first before progressing into the next section area. This was the way that most players of the first game were able to ensure that by the time they ended up at the few at the final few missions, the gear and weapons were more than satisfactory in completion and then progressing to the end game. There is no wrong way to play this game, and that is the beauty of it. You do what you can and what you feel like to progress further into the story and by any means necessary. Acquire the experience needed before tackling a mission or just run through as much of the content as you can until it becomes overwhelming. Either way, you aren't wrong in playing the Division 2 the way you see fit. I hope you get as much information and enjoyment as I have being able to create it for you. The Agents, this is not the first nor will it be the last of many guys that will be coming out throughout the week from various content creators. And again, all the information is about what is going to be most beneficial to you. I wish you good luck. Take care.